Hi, this is Sandeep V. Pednekar over here. I'm a corporate trainer. Today, we are going to speak regarding COVID-5. COVID-5 in nutshell. COVID-5, you'll find these professionals everywhere, mostly in IT. But yes, there are several other companies that, like automotive, retail, banking, insurance, pharma. You'll find these professionals each and everywhere in various IT departments. What it is, we'll see soon. COVID-5. COVID-5 stands for Control Objectives for Information and Related Technologies. What does it mean? It means it has something to do with governance and management. For the time being, you have to understand that there are five principles and seven enablers. And there are five domains and 37 processes. And all this, we have the balance scorecard. The balance scorecard is something where there are four dimensions. One is financial, other is customer, third is internal, and fourth is learning and growth. Format of COVID-5. Simplified. It directly addresses the needs of viewers from different perspectives. The development continues with specific practitioner types. We'll see to it what they are. Initially, it is in three volumes. First is the framework. Second is the process reference model. And third is the implementation guide. COVID-5, as I said, is based on five principles and seven enablers. Before that, let's understand what is quality control and what is quality assurance. Now, the word quality is same over here, but there is a vast difference between quality control and quality assurance. So what is quality control? Something which is focused on a product, something which is reactive, something which has to do with line function. When I mean to say line function, it means production line function. Something which has to do with finding defects and of course testing. When you do testing, then only you find defects. What is quality assurance? Quality assurance is basically focused on the process, the process which is used to generate the product. Your if you look at it, assurance means being proactive always. Whereas QC, we saw it was reactive. Quality assurance is a staff function. So many of the staff members will be involved to ensure that quality assurance is there. It basically relies on prevention of defects. So there may be ample amount of defects, but those defects should not reoccur. And for that, for, for that, uh, for that particular point, it ensures prevention of defects and this can be ensured only through quality audits. I hope you have understood what is the difference between quality control and quality assurance. Do check these points which are there on the left hand side and the right hand side simultaneously. Now, when I talk of COVID-5, look over here. It's an integrated framework. We have certain guidances which come from ISACA. We have well IT, we have risk IT, we have BMIS. Now, what is what is BMIS? BMIS is business model for ISO security. So this has this has to do with ISO 27000. When I talk of risk IT, risk IT is something which has to do with probability and impact. So what are the risks, various risks which are involved when you are going to uh, when, when you are going to implement IT within your organization or you're going to maintain IT within your organization, then there is something called as well IT. Now, the higher management, the governance model, I will say, they invest. They invest only if there is a value for IT investment. So business case, business case is something which will see further what it is and how it can be used to show it to the management what is value for IT investments. There are certain ISAGA guidance materials which are there, standards and frameworks which are there. All this comprise and filter down to the knowledge base. Within the knowledge base, we have the enablers guides. There are seven enablers, mind you. And we have the professionals guides as well. We have the COVID-5 online collaborative environment. When you go to the COVID-5 COVID site, you will understand, understand this. Look at this, the enablers. As I said, there are seven enablers and we are going to look at each of the enablers 
okay which enables this process to execute now covid 5 product family look over here the enabler guides enabling processes enabling information enabler guides these are other enabler guides which are there professional guides how do you implement covid 5 what do you do for information security what do you do for assurance what do you do for risk mitigation these are involved these are all there in the professional guides and then as i said you have the covid 5 online collaborative environment as well what is the evolution of covid 5 started in 1996 we had covid 1 which has something to do with audit then we have covid 2 which has something to do with control next we have covid 3 which has something to do with the management and last but not the least actually it is governance and management of enterprise it that's what you look over here in 2012. now after covid 5 we have covid 2019 which is also there which has also come up now i'm going to take take you uh, through covid 2019 in my next presentation but as of now let's focus only on covid 5. so understand that it's governance of enterprise it geit they, that's what they call it this is a COVID-5 framework, how it evolved in 1996. It was released first in 1995, 1995 and it was released first in 1996. In 1995, Windows 95 came, Java came. Over a period of time, we had the IEEE, the LAN standards, which came into picture. Third edition came in 2000. Then we had the, then we had the interactive uh, uh, internet uh, archive wayback machine, which came in 2002. In 2002, we had Subnase Oxley, which came into picture. We call it SOX. It is basically to do with accounting errors. Similarly, we have something called as Basel II, which is basically the bank, which has something to do with the cash flow of the banking of the banking firms. Now, it grew. It came to 2005. We had COVID 4.0. Then Wi-Fi came into picture in 2003. So all these standards which came in 2006, we had Twitter, which was founded out. Google took on YouTube. So it was upgraded. COVID was updated to 4.1. We had Apple iPhone, okay, which came somewhere around 2007. And finally, COVID-5 integrated framework, which consisted of 4.1, well IT, risk IT. All these came into picture in 2012 and continues as of now. Still, still it is there. Yes, 2019, the version has come up, okay? And we are going to talk regarding this during our next presentation. COVID-5 mapping summary. I said something called as PBRM. So look at this, APO, Align, Plan, and Organize. This is Plan, Build, Run, and Deliver. So it's something like, you know, uh, uh, it's something like management you can say so here if you look at the first section EDM it's the governance model what is ISO I500 8500 it is something to do with corporate governance of information technology all of you know what is PINS2 and PIMBOK it is basically uh, when I say PIMBOK it is it's something to do with PMP so these are the project management methodology me methodologies which are there you have TOGAP that's the open group architecture which is there. We have CMMI, Capability Maturity Model Integrated. ISO IC 31000. Now, that is something which is related to risk management. So, I, as I said, probability into, probability into impact and risk mitigation. ISO IC 27000, that's related to security standards. So, if you look at it, if you look at it, you'll understand where COVID lies. Let's look at the next picture, which will tell you where actually COVID lies. Look at it. We have COSO, which is the community of sponsoring organizations. This was formed in order to bring down the frauds which were happening in the banking industry and elsewhere, in the financial accounting as well. So here, if you look at it, here you can see ISO 9000, which is related to quality standards as well. So this is how COVID is integrated with other IT governance frameworks. Now, how does COVID interact? It's called as goals cascade. We'll see to it what it is. Let's assume there's drivers. 
business wants something and governance, enterprise governance, which means our C suit, you can say. Then you have the I governance, CTO, CIO, okay. Best practices are already which are already there. If from here, if you look at it, ISO 9001 is quality. You have 27002, which is related to security. Sorry, and you have 20,000, which is related to IT service management. There are certain so there are certain QA procedures, there are security principles, and of course there is ETIL. So all these things interact on a timely basis with COVID-5. COVID-5 is integrated with all, all these project management methodologies, which all these uh, quality processes with all these domains, and they work hand in hand. Now let's talk of COVID-5 principles. The first principle is meeting stakeholder needs. Of course, what the stakeholders need is very important. So the stakeholders can be internal, they can be external, can be your customers, external can be your governmental organ, can be anyone internal, can be anyone within the department or different different departments covering the enterprise end to end. Which means whatever we have been doing, it should actually be beneficial to the entire organization and to the customers as well. Applying a single integrated framework. I mean to say this, it means that. It should be integrated with what the customer is using, what we are using, and what COVID-5 is telling us to apply. Enabling a holistic approach. Yes, it's a collaborative approach which we are talking of. Separating governance from management. Governance and management are entirely different things that we saw in, in the five domains and in the 37 processes. So we'll, we, we'll see to it in details a little further. Seven enablers. These are the enablers in which, if you look at it, processes, second one, is, is a very important enabler because that's how, you know, you understand how your organization runs, how you're going to implement COVID within your organization, how you're going to have your governance structure in place, how you're going to have your management structure in place. So you have principles, policies and frameworks, you have different, different processes which are there. You have 37 processes which are divided across five different domains. You have different organization structures. US has its own way. Europe has its own way. India has its own way. You have different cultures, ethics and behaviors, which varies from country to country. And now in today's world, if you look at it, okay, it's going to be a remote world, working from anywhere. And that's going to be the foremost thing which each and every company is going to apply. Fifth is information. Success services, infrastructure and application. It can be SaaS, PaaS, or it can be cloud. Seventh is people, skills and competencies. So these are, if you look at this resources, what is written over here, information, services, infrastructure and application. And people's skills and competencies are the various resources which are part of the enablers, which help you to implement COVID-5 within your organization and better to start within your project first. Next, there are several enablers dimensions. The enablers dimensions, the performance managements. Now, just give me a moment, please. Now, there are several stakeholders. I said internal and external. Everyone has its own goal. When I say intrinsic goal, intrinsic goal means something which is unique, unique to the project, unique to the organization, unique to the customer. And textual assessment, when I say contextual assessment, which means something which is affected by usage. The timing of the usage, the expertise of the individual, the organizational domains, all these things are part of it. Then there's a life cycle. I said PBR, PBRM. So that's that's a life cycle which is there. Plan, design, build, use, evaluate. Good practices. They can be work product which has inputs and outputs. There can be several practices which are there across the organizations, or they can be taken from HL as well if you if required. Enabler performance management. First of all, what the stakeholder needs? Are we addressing that? Are enablers goal achieved? There are seven enablers I told you. They have different, different goals. We'll look into it. Is the entire life cycle managed, which you look over here. It's over here. Are good practices applied? So this is what leads to metrics and metrics are used for achievements of the goals. There are two different types of metrics. One is a lag indicator and other is a lead, lead indicator. We'll see in details what is lag and what is a lead indicator. When I mean to say lead and lag indicator, 
most of the times people are people are confused with it but let me tell you leading indicator is an indicator an indicator of performance that might predict future success for example you have user guide usage you have calories per day using safety equipments so these are certain indicators which you are predicting and which you are putting in place at present lagging indicator an indicator of past performance that measures how we perform for example you take the customer satisfaction you take your weight on a particular day the number of deaths which might have happened recently uh, uh, the epidemic the pandemic which we are going across so these are the lagging indicators so they say these words might confuse you lead and lag but yes there is a vast difference between it lead is something which is taken first and lag is, lag is something which is taken after things happen covid 5 covid 5 is all dependent on goals cascade stakeholders tell you something okay they should benefit out of it there is a risk of optimization which one needs to do there is a resource optimization which one needs to do and then you go to goals cascade So what is goals cascade? Stakeholder needs. You see to it. What are the enterprise goals first? You map it with the IT related goals, and then you map the IT related goals with the enabler goals. So totally, if you look, there are 17 generic and IT related goals, and they are distributed upon balance scorecard four dimensions. What is a balance scorecard? Something which we present to the management is called as a balance scorecard. It can be in different ways. It can be in form of matrix. It can be in form of uh graphs it can be in form of statistics so divided across across four dimensions one is financial other is customer third is internal and learning and growth when i mean to say internal anything internal which has which is related to your organization your department your project which you yourself have to do so for example it can be your hr it can be your quality team it can be your risk management team look at this picture you have covid 5 it domains and processes i told you there are five domains edm is one of them apo is one of them B, uh, bai is one of them tss is one of them and mea is one of them so it is it is pbrm so this is plan build run and m is monitor or management and this is the entire governance structure which is there. so this is a framework there are different different uh which ensures that delivery is properly done there is a risk optimization which is done resource optimization is also there so i told you there are three different kind of resources which are there it can be people it can be it information technology and it can be your infrastructure as well and you have a stakeholders transparency when the transparency is there because what happens you know many of the times when people send across reports they don't tell what are the negative points it's really very bad you have to tell what are the negative points what are risk associated with it and how you are going to mitigate it so if you look at this these are total 37 processes which are divided across these five different domains governance is edm i told you management is called as plan build run and monitor so this is planning building running and monitor of management i can say now let's talk what is goals cascade look at the look over here there are 17 enterprise goals which are written over here and there are 17 it related goals which are written over here if you look at it they these are divided across four dimensions financials customer internal learning and growth and the same thing over here if you look at it the same thing over here so there you have to give it whether it is primary or it is secondary depending upon what kind of you know importance is it whether it is it has got a primary importance or it has got a secondary importance at some times you see this blank spaces there are chances that you know you might not be focused on those particular dimensions at this particular point of time when you have mapped your enterprises goals against the it related goals the next thing which comes into picture is mapping your it related goals with the covid 5 processes so these are the 37 processes which are there which are across this five dimensions so you have look at it how how they align similarly this is the it related goals and these are two dimensions which i can see over here and that's how you have to do the mapping first from here you will understand which are really very essential and crucial for you 
to manage and monitor at each and every point of time. COVID-5, how you are going to implement it? It's a full-fledged program. I suggest start it with by, by you know, uh, pinpointing or taking into consideration maybe two or three different kinds of projects. You start with, you start with this, what are the drivers, okay? So what are the drivers, where do you want to go, where do you want to be, what, what needs to be done. So this is how, you know, this is how it goes ahead. Look on the right hand side, you'll see the phases in the program steps which are there. So the program management is the outer ring which is there in blue. And if you look at uh, it, it, you, the change enable, ena enablement, which is there, it's the middle ring and the continuous service improvement. Now, there are some things which are not noticed over here. If you look at point three, this is something which is called as define the target state. So where do we want to be? Where are we now is what, if you recollect, I had told in one of my sessions, it is the baseline. Look at point number four. Here, it's something is not seen we are, uh, you have identified roles, role players. This is building, but this is building the improvements. And at the fifth point, you have implementing the improvements. So when you have all these things in places, you are ready to implement COVID-5. And mind you, it's a optimizing process. So what you implement now will be optimized over a period of time. I told you what is a business case. Business case is something which you present to the present to the manager, to the governance, to the CSU, to get uh, your funding uh, for implementation of COVID. Now, it can, be in, it can be for any other purpose, but business case is a very good tool, which you can present to the management. You, you, you will tell them why you need the investment, what will be the operating cost, what are the con constraints and the dependencies, what are the several roles, responsibilities, and how you're going to monitor the investment, and what is the ROI and the ROV, which is the return of value, which you will get out of implementing COVID within your project, within your organization. Transition to COVID-5. I told you, COVID-5 is a framework, and it consists of COVID-4.1, well IT, Okay, which is valuation for what investment you are doing in IT and risk IT, which is based on COVID. So what are the several risks which are there in the IT investments which you are going to do? Now, mind you, there's a RACI matrix. The RACI matrix which is there in COVID-5 is a little bit different. So here, if you look at it, these are the governance practices. And these, are, when you have the governance practices, these are people from mostly from the board of directors and people from the management who, you know, what they are going to do, who is responsible for what. So this is a RACI matrix, responsible, accountable, controlled, and from whom you are going to inform. So all this, you put it in a chart so that your process happens in a streamlined way. There's something called as process assessment model. So now these 37 processes which you are going to execute. So how you are going to know whether these processes are really worthwhile. So there is something, you know, what are you going to do? So you have, you have the PRM, you have the process assessment model, you have the measurement framework. So this is what you are going to do. And how you are going to do is going to tell you how you are going to monitor it, how you are going to, uh, how you are going to implement your preventive measures at this place. So you have the initial inputs which you get, you have several roles and responsibilities, you have certain assessment processes, and then you have the output data on which you do a lot of statistical analysis to understand how you are going to optimize your process in the coming months and coming years. Now, what, what does COVID-5 use for process assessment? It uses ISO 15504, what it is called, it is also called as SPICE, Software Process Improvement and Capability Determination. determination. So if you look at this, 4.1, it is basically IRDMO, that's what I call it, Initial, Repeatable, Defined, Managed, and Optimized. Here, in COVID-5, it's a little bit different. You have these optimizing, you have these optimizing capability levels, and you have these several attributes. They are, as far as the international standards are concerned, there are total nine attributes. So what is level zero? Level zero is something where it is saying incomplete. What is level one? You have performed or done something and you have informed that, yes, I have done this. What is level two? Level two is managed, which means you're planning and monitoring what, 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 what is going on 
within your organization, within your project, okay? Established, which means your process is perfectly well-defined, predictable. So you do a quanti quantitative analysis over here and you predict something, optimizing. Depending upon this predictability nature and quantitative analysis which you are doing, you go on doing continuous improvement and that's how your process, your standards, you know, it becomes foolproof. Look at this picture. Here you can see this nine process attributes which are there. This is the incomplete process. These are certain general practices, general resources, general work products which are there. And these are the process outcomes. What are the process outcomes? They can be the best practices, they can be management practices, government practices, work product practices. And to ensure that each product attribute is really foolproof, we have a four point rating scale that is called as NPLF. N is not achieved, partially achieved, largely achieved, and fully achieved. So if I take an example of largely achieved, so something, you know, which will give you a matrix which is greater than 50% to 85% that you can say is largely achieved from that process attribute point of view. Now, we have the COVID-5 certification roadmap. Initially, you are at this level. What I'm explaining you is this, this particular level. COVID-5 foundation course, which can be of three days. Then you take the exam. You can do, take either of this path. One is the SSA path or the implementation path for which we have a three days program. And then you go to the SSA exam and that's the SSA path. You become an SSA. And SSA is someone, you know, you can say he's an auditor kind of a person. Then you go to, if you want to implement COVID-5 within your project, within your organization, you can take this path. So this is, you have the implementation course and then you have the exam and you, then you go ahead and become an implementation implementation expert for COVID-5. So I hope that I have given you enough insight into COVID-5. So maybe next time I'll come up with a video for COVID-2019 to understand what is the difference between COVID-5 and COVID-2019 and why and how you can transition from COVID-5 to COVID-2019. Thank you.